I've been freelancing for about 10 months now, so I thought it was time to make a video. Let's get into it. So one of the first things I learned quick and early on is that I have to be my own boss. I really have to have a routine and stick to it. This one's very important as a freelancer because since you have this freedom, you can work on stuff really whenever you want as little or as much as possible. Since I have to be my own boss, I like to keep my routine nice and tight. I schedule everything out in Google Calendar. I found that time chunking and dedicating different parts of my day really helps out because it's hard to get stuff done and be productive and have a routine when your calendar just says something like work on freelance or work on design. I really do my best to section out each part of the day so I know how much time I have for everything and I can get everything done. What I found works best is every morning I wake up around 9 10 a.m make my coffee kind of wake up just get ready for everything get down at my desk and this is when i do my most deep work from around 10 to 2 i'm the most productive i found that find that time for yourself don't let anyone take that time away from you be your own boss and also be your own best friend treat yourself good but get your stuff done so this one's about money and it's huge your income month to month is going to change so for the first few months of freelancing i was doing very well i made a video about when i quit my job right here I'll link that in the description also. Off just pure freelance design the first few months, I was making as much money each month as I was at my full-time job. I had a lot of clients lined up and things were going great. Now on the other hand, I have had a few months in the last 10 where there wasn't that much stuff and luckily I had money from other sources, but nothing's guaranteed like it would be if you were to have a salary paycheck. So one really important thing is you have to learn how to budget and be realistic with your expenses. Don't raise your expenses every time your income increases. If you're doing that, every time you make more money, if you raise the amount of money you're spending, you're having the same amount left over. So try to keep your expenses the same, even if your income goes up or down. That way, you're comfortable. You can save during the really good feast months and the famine months when things aren't going so well. You have a nice little cushion because you are responsible during the good times. So this one kind of goes with the last one, and it's to try to have multiple sources of income. And I know that's easier said than done, but if it's possible for you, really try to pursue it. I was proud of my for realizing that now I had the freedom of not having to work at a day job. My schedule is more flexible. And I had more time to pursue passive side incomes. I think this is a very important aspect of working for yourself because it helps you get by and not be completely reliant on just client work. For myself, I got into selling prints, the Patreon, diving more into YouTube, the podcast. Some other good side hustles I recommend if you're a designer uh, other than selling prints is doing some kind of print on demand stuff where you're selling shirts or other things and other people are shipping them out. It's a lot low risk and it's helpful if you don't want to carry the inventory and all that. Another thing is selling assets. So someone like Black Market, Album Art Archive, Duran Studio, Reno, things like that. They sell mock-ups, textures and whatnot. That stuff, it's really low cost to start out and there's a lot of potential there for money to be made. And then you're not completely relying on clients. I want to make a video actually about all different kinds of passive income ideas for designers. So let me know in the comments if that that's something that would interest you. Basically, what I'm trying to say is like that age old phrase, don't put all your eggs in one basket. We saw when COVID hit, people that were completely reliant on their one job and their one source of income got hit the hardest. So this one's huge. You have to come to the realization as a freelance designer, you aren't just a designer, you're an accountant, social media manager, videographer, content creator, account manager, all that stuff. But you got to realize early on that you can't just sit around and design all day. Someone has to do the managerial stuff. In a perfect world, you know, I'd record these videos, design projects, have someone else edit them for me, email people, post on social media, do my taxes and all that. But as you know, we don't live in a perfect world and I don't have the extra cash to be paying all these people to do that stuff at this moment. I make sure to set aside time every week to do more of the managerial managerial stuff like schedule posts on social media, email clients back, sponsorship opportunities, keep track of my income and expenses. When it's just yourself, you got to learn how to do these things and it gets easier to create a system and over time things just start to fall into place. This next thing I want to talk about is having a good portfolio to show your work online. If you still need a portfolio, then you can check out today's video sponsor, Zyro. Zyro is an awesome website builder and the easiest way for you to create an online portfolio. It's so easy 
easy. They even have an AI system that will generate a website for you to fit all your needs. If you want to create one from scratch though, you can also do that or you can choose from one of the many awesome templates. It's easy to use. It's by far the most affordable option on the market. So if you're looking to get more serious about freelancing, need an online portfolio, want to sell prints, or even just want to check out the different options, go check out Zyro today. All the Zyro website plans have a 30 day money back guarantee. So for a limited time only, you can get an exclusive discount plus three months free with any yearly Zyro plan. All you got to do is use my code Jesse, J-E-S-S-E, -S -S -E, and click the link in the video description. Now let's get back into the video. In addition to having your work online in a portfolio, you also have to be on social media. Whatever you want to think about it, it is what it is. However, it's important to diversify on there. So we all know Instagram has kind of been the meta for design and photography for many years, but we're starting to realize that it's not really serving us anymore for just static design, mostly about reels and video content. And if you're not into that thing, you really got to diversify and you can't put all your love into one app. My advice to you would be to branch out, try things that you're not used to, and you know, post on Twitter more, make some TikToks, write a newsletter, start a Patreon, make YouTube videos, do anything. Don't just put all your time into Instagram. It's also good to just have your message across different platforms because you never know which right person can come across it. This goes with my last one. Even though I said you need to be on social media, what I mean is output. I think your social media ratio should be 80% output and 20% input. What what I mean by that is I only consume social media content 20% of what I'm putting out. So 80% of my energy is going into posting on social media or creating things for social media and the consuming other people's content. I try my best to limit that to only 20%. Obviously we're not perfect and I probably make up a big chunk of that 20% late at night or on the toilet, things like that. However, it's important to try your best to do that and just be conscious of your decision around using these apps. They're created to make us spend all our day on them. This is an important one and there's power in saying no. I learned this early on getting a bunch of inquiries for not so great projects. It's important to be smart with your time and energy and turn down projects that won't serve your goals. For example, I can turn down three projects that are all right in a row and it may seem like I'm missing opportunities, but then comes along that fourth project that pays more than all of them. It's more exciting and if you were doing those other ones, you wouldn't have time for this cool thing. So now that your energy is free and you're not wrapped up in three mediocre projects, you have all your time to put into this great project. This next one is having the flexibility to say yes to more non-work things. I know I just told you to say no, but that's for projects. Say yes to non-work things. You have the freedom now to do more activities and you should do them. Some of my best ideas have come from non-work things, going out to concerts, hanging out with friends, things like that. If you don't go out and live and do something that's essential to being a human being, you'll have nothing to draw from when it's time to create design and art. At the end of the day, we're all humans and we need to experience life. Don't get too wrapped up in your work and just do things that you can now that you especially have a little bit more freedom to be flexible with your schedule. Stay connected with other creatives and friends. Once I started working from home, I realized quickly I simply just don't interact with as many people in a given day. Even going to work at the office, you know, I would talk to coworkers and just connect with other human beings. I think it's a myth when they say that like art needs to be created in isolation. So just be a good human mean be a good member of the creative community and get some cool friends and just work on cool shit together so i know to this point i've been talking about work being efficient scheduling and all that is important but not if you take care of yourself and give yourself some leisure time so make sure to separate your work life from your relaxing leisure you know personal life whatever you want to call it i know that that can be hard especially when you're working at home but you need to set boundaries how to set up an area of the house that's just for work that way when you're not in there you're not working. Also, just try your best to eat healthy, get enough rest, yada yada, the things that you're supposed to be told. And I know that that is something that people are always saying, and I don't always follow up my best, but you got to give yourself time to recharge. Energy is our most valuable asset, not time. And if you don't have this energy that's so precious, you won't be able to perform your work. One actionable piece of advice I can give you for overall creativity and mental health is going for walks. I know it sounds kind of simple, but going for walks has been very important for my mind, body, and overall creativity. Don't use your phone when you do this walk. Don't listen to music, nothing like that. Just go outside once a day, walk around for like 20, 30 minutes, and it'll pay off. 
trust me. So this is something that I've been realizing as I go on more and it's to try to build lasting relationships with clients because repeat clients are the best clients. Some of my favorite clients and projects are people that I've worked with on multiple occasions. If you find a client you click with, nurture that relationship, make sure to stay connected to them and just keep them happy and keep them around. The more you already know them, you don't have to meet beforehand and do a lot of these little formalities that we have to do. Also, the longer you work together, the more you're on the same page and it's easy Easier to keep the project moving along. So the last thing I want to talk about, I know that client projects are very important and it's crucial for paying the bills, but I want you to set aside time for personal projects. It's important to set aside this time for growth and creativity. Some of my favorite projects I've created from doing my own things and experimenting and just creating art for art's sake. I even talked with Obi and Japari on my podcast and they told me they set aside time at their studio each week just for working on personal projects and they work on giant campaigns campaigns for Nike and things like that. So if they can do it, you can do it. I hope this information was useful to you. And if it was, hit that like button. And if you want to hear more from me, subscribe to stick around. And if you don't want to miss out on any videos, hit that notification bell. Thanks for watching. Peace.